Hi there, welcome to Nepi Invest. Time for a technical update, 26th of March, 2023 edition. And in today's technical update, I'm going to feature five ASX companies and also five companies listed either on the NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange. And the reason I'm including non-ASX companies in today's video is because I am diversifying. I am adding international companies to my portfolio. I've been doing this over the past about a year and a half. Um, traditionally, I have only invested in the ASX, but once you start researching international companies or companies listed on uh, overseas exchanges, you do open up yourself for your investing universe. And I think the quality of companies in your portfolio can only improve. That's my philosophy behind it. And I would say the majority of long-term investments I have made over the past six to nine months have been in international companies. Well, companies that are listed on international exchanges. That's why sometimes I will focus on the American market because majority of the best quality companies in the world, in my opinion, are on either the NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange. Now, I will be looking at Novonics. This has been, well, at one point in time, this was um, a favorite among retail investors. I still remember doing my first video on this company, pronounced the name completely wrong. I think I said Novonix or something like that, but it is pronounced Novonix. In fact, the first time I took notice to this company was back in September 2020 when the share price reacted weirdly after the Tesla shareholder day, whatever you call, want to call that. A share price initially opened up, then it fell down. Share price pulled back to an interesting level in comparison to where the share price is right now. And during September 2020 and now, the share price has gone all the way up to something like $11 or $12 from about $1, $1.50 and all the way back down, which means if you're excited about this company, now could be a good time to looking at maybe either adding to your position or taking an initial position in this company, even though there's a lot of negative sentiment in this company right now. Now, the other four ASX companies I'll be featuring in this video include, the first company I'll be looking at is a company I've never heard of before this week, and that's Bezra Gold. And by far, Bezra Gold was the best performing company on the ASX. And we'll talk about and see why that company went up from about $0.04 cents to $0.16. Cents. So that was a quadruple bagger for those shareholders who had a position at the start of the week. We'll take a look at Siri Resources. The share price of that company has pulled back a significant amount over the past month, month and a half. And right now it is at a strong support level, which is the uptrend line, the long-term uptrend line. Also have a look at Appen. Appen share price is going sideways. I read an article in regards to the current CEO who hasn't been in that position long. And he believes, and maybe he's a little bit biased because he's the CEO of Appen. He believes that G chat GPT will significantly benefit Appen in the long run. I think the market is unconvinced about that sort of, thinking from the CEO of Appen. So it remains to be seen whether he's right. If he is right, you have to argue that Appen is undervalued right now. And then the last company we'll look at is Revel. This company is in my long-term portfolio. It is a high quality company on the ASX. And where the share price is right now for Revel also looks quite interesting. The first two American listed companies I'll be featuring in today's video are BuzzFeed and C3i. In fact, this is a bit of an update because the previous American focused video I did featured these two companies because this was around the time there was that hype in AI and that hype in AI has continued to now. In fact, BuzzFeed's share price rose. It was 100% one day, 80% the next day, or maybe it was flipped. And that was just around some comments from the CEO. And the other company is C3AI, and artificial intelligence is in their name. It's also in their TIGA code. In fact, that company's TIGA code is AI. But what's been really interesting in regards to these two companies has been the share price performance um, differences between the two companies. And the reason why there's a big difference between the share price performance of BuzzFeed compared to C3AI, since I last did a video, has been around the volume. Volume is very important. In fact, I think, in my opinion, volume is underappreciated. And it's one of the first things I do look at when I look at the chart. How high or low is the volume? The next two companies I'll be looking at are mature companies, including General Electric, which at one point in time, I think was probably one of the biggest companies in the world, if not the biggest companies in the world. And it has had some trouble times 
but the share price is almost at a 10 year high. So the market, for some reason, is interested in General Electric right now. The other company, mature company, is 3M uh, company, T code MMM. And the share price has pulled back something like 50%, even though it's a fairly stable company in terms of revenue. Revenue is just flat. There's no growth. This is not a growth company. Revenue going sideways. But the dividend yield for this company, something like 6.5%, which is unusual for companies listed on the AS. I say I mean, listed on the overseas uh, or American exchanges simply because they're not obs obsessed as well, with dividends as Australian investors simply because they don't have franking credits over there. So typically, you will see Australian-based companies having a higher dividend yield than American-listed companies. And then the last company we'll be looking at is Netflix. And simply, uh, the, the simple reason I want to look at Netflix is just because of the chart and a beautiful developing uptrend with that company in terms of its chart. First company we'll look at is Basra Gold. Never heard of this company before this week. Two reasons why I've never heard of this company. First, they're a mining exploring company and I don't really have that much interest in mining exploring companies. And the main reason behind that is either you have to be an expert in mining exploring companies, you have to know what they are looking for, that sort of thing, or you have to have really high risk tolerance. And to be fair with you, I don't have that high risk tolerance simply because I'm pretty stupid when it comes to mining exploring. And the other reason I have never heard of this company before is because simply because they only listed in late 2021. So they haven't been around that long and the share price has been going down. The share price has been under significant pressure since they listed until this week. Now, there was some excitement in this company, one day excitement from the market in November last year, massive volume. In fact, the highest volume this company has seen. And on that day, it was a capital raising. They announced a capital raising. And also, they announced they were in advanced discussion with the major shareholder, Quantum Metals or something like that, in regards to a $300 million US dollar off-take agreement between the two parties. So one point on this day, and it was just one day, the share price was probably about up about over 100%. And then a lot of selling came in. And after this day, that interest completely waned away. So even though they were in these advanced discussions with Quantum Metals about a $300 million off-take agreement, the market didn't care until this week when the company officially announced that they have agreed to this non-binding off-take agreement with Quantum for $300 million. And then the market got really excited, sort of like the complete opposite to buy the rumor, sell the fact. So even though there was rumors, or maybe not even rumors, advanced discussions, the market didn't want a bar of it until they saw the official agreement. And then the market got really interested. Now, I'm not sure if the market got interested about the announcement or it's just day traders. Day traders look at the chart, looked at this increase in volume on the day they announced this uh, uh, off-take agreement. So at one point in the day, the share price was up over 150%. Previous day, the share price closed at $0.04. Cents. The high on this day, the day they announced the agreement, was at $0.10.5. Cents. But then a lot of selling came in, and the share price fell from $0.10.5 cents at the high and closed at $0.06. Cents. And then over the next three trading days, we saw increased interest in this company for some reason. In fact, the last two trading days we saw, apart from that record volume day in November last year, we did see heightened volume. So again, just follow the volume. And what the volume is showing me here is day traders are really interested in this company right now. So let's have a look at the five minute chart. You can just see that increase in interest after that initial day, after they announced this uh, offtake agreement and why the day traders are really excited about this company. And I probably should clarify, the day traders are not excited about the company, they're just excited about the chart. So when they did announce this off-take agreement, so that would have been on the Tuesday, the share price opened up something like 80% higher. And then we did have that day traders came in, saw the share price up higher, then they bought in, rushed in the first, uh, say, 30 minutes or so, forced the share price up to 10.5 cents. And then we did see a fair bit of selling coming in during the day. And the share price has trickled down from 10.5 cents to, in fact, a low of 5.4 cents the next morning. So that lack of interest actually continued into the next morning. Share price closed 6 cents on the Tuesday, 
continue to fall in the first, say, hour on the next day, down to 5.4 cents. And then for some reason, there was a little bit of increased interest at around about noon on the Wednesday. And that was the trigger for day traders to get excited in this company. And then that excitement continued on open the next day on the 23rd, and the share price kept on going higher. So day traders would be looking at what's happening with the volume, what's happening with the share price action, and they are forcing the share price higher. So that's why the share price increased from 5.4 cents at the low on the Wednesday to a high of 18.5 cents on the Friday. So all day traders excited about the chart. Not necessarily excited about the announcement from the company, just excited about the chart. And the last thing I should mention is I'm not the biggest fan of off-take agreements, particularly non-binding off-take agreements. I've seen plenty of times in the past where even though the market might get excited about an off-take agreement, nothing comes to fruition and it doesn't really benefit the company in the long term. Maybe I'm just biased because what I've seen in the past with these off-take agreements means absolutely nothing to the company in the future. So if you disagree with me, I'd love to hear from you. If you love off-take agreements, you think they are heaps beneficial, hugely beneficial to companies, uh, I'd love to hear from you. So leave it in the comment section of this video. On to Sierra Resources. This is a graphite company. A few years ago, maybe three or four years ago, this was a really hyped up stock. Share price pulled all the way back to about 25 cents at one point in time. And that's in uh, 2020. So this is the weekly chart from 2019 all the way through to 2023. Share price fell to that low of about 12 and a half cents, looks like, back during the COVID-19 financial panic. But since then, the share price of Sierra Resources has been in an uptrend. So a three-year uptrend with Sierra Resources. And I've portrayed that uptrend line or the uptrend, the bottom of the uptrend, with this horizontal dashed line. So the last time we saw the share price reach this uptrend line was back in July of 2020. And the share price bounced significantly off the uptrend line. In fact, the share price went from about $1.12 all the way up to $2.65 in about three to four months. So that's the share price more than doubled in a very short period of time. But since that high we saw back in November, October, November of $2.65, the share price has pulled all the way back to a current share price of $1.47. And it's now right on the uptrend line. Now, significant selling in the last three weeks, share price has gone down in three successive weeks on higher volume. So there is a little bit of negative sentiment in this company right now. And the question is, will those traders, those day traders, medium term traders, see where the share price is in relation to the uptrend? And will they get interested in taking a position, a low risk position in this company right now? And it'll be the day traders, those shorter term traders, who might support Sierra Resources share price right now. If they don't get any, if they can't get support from those uh, short-term traders, the share price has the potential to fall even further from here. And that would be a little bit more bearish. Talking about uptrends, another company whose share price is right on an uptrend is Breville. Unlike uh, Sierra Resources, this is just a daily chart. And the uptrend is just a grinding slow, or slowly grinding uptrend. The uptrend starts during last year, and we have seen the share price pull back to the uptrend line twice. First time was in October, second time was in December, and both times we saw the share price respond. And right now, the share price of Breville is right on that uptrend line. So there is potential we might see another bounce in Breville share price over the next few weeks. And the recent high we saw back in February was a higher high than the recent high we saw, or the previous high to that we saw in November. So we are getting these higher highs, higher lows. Now, you might argue that that high in November was actually lower than the high we saw in August. But if you take at the longer term view, when I say longer term view, we're only talking about the last nine months, share price does look like it is trying to uh, move into an uptrend with those higher highs, higher lows. Now, if the share price falls below the current uptrend line, and falls, falls below the previous low we saw in December, that will be a bearish sign for Breville. Although in my opinion, Breville is a high quality company, and if the share price does fall much further from here, and when I say much further, I'm talking about another $5 or so, I would become interested in adding to my position. Now onto Navonix, the feature company in today's video. So typically I look at the feature company at the start of the video, but in this case, I'm looking at, at the end of the ASX um, section. Now, Navonics, I'm going to look at two charts here. The first chart is the daily chart. I'm pretty sure I'm looking at two charts. Let's have a look. Yeah, I'm looking at two charts. So the first chart here is the daily chart. 
And the data, this particular data chart goes to, goes all the way back. I'm just waiting for this screen. There it is. It goes all the way back to June last year. And share price on the Vonix has been in a well-defined downtrend for a while. It just keeps on falling. So even though you get these times, very short period of times, when the share price goes on a rally, we saw a nice little rally in the Vonix share price in October. Share price went from $1.75 to $3.25 or almost $3.25 in about six days of trading. So even though the share price is in a downtrend, at times in any company whose share price is in a downtrend, you will see these very short-term rallies. And a lot of times in these short-term rallies, you won't see any volume. But with the Novonics, you do get a little bit of excitement because this is uh, a, has been a favorite stock among retail investors over the past few years. But the share price just keeps on falling. And right now, the share price is at $1.15. And it's just above a very strong support level. That support level is just around $1. And round numbers in itself tend to be very strong support or resistance level. But the reason $1 here is a strong support level for non Onyx uh, is because of what happened in September or just after September 2020. And to see what happened in September and a few months after uh, that month in 2020, we need to look at the longer term chart. So let's have a look at the longer term chart for Nephonix. And the Vonix chart looks like the Matterhorn. You see a lot of these type of charts uh, on the ASX and probably around the world, particularly uh, tech companies where you have a massive spike in the share price in like 2021, maybe even to the end of 2020 into 2021. And then the share price has pulled back significantly. And that's exactly what we see with the Novonix. Share price high for this company was $12.50 back towards the end of 2021. So if you did buy shares in this company uh, towards the end of 2020 into 2021, you probably did okay, unless you held on to your shares. And if you held on to your shares, unfortunately, the share price has pulled back from that high of $12.50 all the way back down to $1.15. So the share price of this company has decreased by more than 90%. But again, that $1 level is a fairly significant level in terms of it being a round number. And if we go back to that Tesla day back in 2020, initially the share price of this company responded positively on the day. And then during the day, share price really pulled back. And then the share price went sideways. You can see the share price just going sideways for about three or four months. And the share price just remained above $1 during that period of time. And then the share price took off the start of 2021 on heightened volume. Share price pulled above the highs we saw during the Tesla day back in 2020. And then the share price really took off in the second half of 2021 to that high of $12.50. So right now, the Novonix share price is just above that really important support level. And if that support level is broken, that will be troubling times for Novonix. And the reason why that level is a strong support level. First of all, it's a round number. For some reasons, investors love round numbers. They always put in their bids at round numbers. And the second thing or reason is, people know there would be quite a few Nivonix investors, those who want to invest in Nivonix, knows that in 2020, the last half of 2020, the share price of this company was just above $1 for a long period of time. And for those who missed out on buying shares during that period, have seen the share price pull back and go, well, the share price has pulled back to the levels we saw in the last half of 2020. Maybe now is a time to take a position in this company. So that is a thought process is going through a lot of investors. They compare where the share price is now to historical ranges or historical periods and think, well, they didn't. It must be good. The share price has pulled back to these levels. The share price used to be like that one point in time. Now is a good time to take a position in this company. So that is a support we are hoping or investors in this company are hoping will be there right now for Novonix because if the share price falls below a dollar on strength, on high volume, that will be really bearish for this company. Well, sorry, Appen, I completely forgot I was supposed to look at you. So even though I thought Novonix was the last ASX company I was going to look at. In fact, it is App, and this was a sort of a last, last minute idea to include App in this video, just because of what the share price has done over the past about five months. It's actually going sideways. Not only that, you can see how important our resistance levels are. And for App, and over the past few months, whenever the share price moves into the moving averages area zone, and what I describe the moving averages zone is 
the area between the 150-day moving average and the 25 moving average, particularly the 150-day moving average. When the share price gets to that level, we see a fair bit of selling coming in. We have seen that happen about three or four times. In fact, five times over the past year and uh, four months. Whenever the share price hits or gets on that 150-day moving average, we see the selling coming in. So that 150-day moving average for Avon is the resistance line or zone for this company. But the share price has been going sideways. And I should also mention, the last time the share price hit the 150-day moving average was back in February. You can see massive volume coming in. Share price took off over a couple of days. I'm not sure, I remember why it took off hit the 150-day moving average, and then the share price pulled back. So again, there probably will be traders out there who know that is a resistance zone for this company. And when they see the share price get to that level, they sell, and there's not enough buying out there to support their selling. That's why the share price pulls back. But the share price has been consolidating over the past, say, five months. So since around about November, we'll say share price going sideways. We had a small period of time in February. was a little bit of hype in this company. A little bit of um, selling coming in towards the end of February when the company did release their results. But that selling didn't last and the share price has pulled, has uh, um, gone up again. And right now, we have just seen the 150-day moving average moving to my red zone. And that is an indication, particularly when we see the moving averages squeezed together, we are in a consolidation period for this for this company, which means the share price could go sideways for another year, two years, three years. But what I want to see with Appen is some good news from the company. And I think on the first sign of any good news, well, not the first sign, but when the company releases an announcement that is perceived by the market as good news, and preferably, I like that good news as some financial data, good financial data from the company. I think that's the time to either add to your position in this company or buy a position in this company. So I think you can be patient with a company like Appen unless the share price starts to move in a nice developed uptrend because I think there is potential share price will move sideways from here because the market is unsure, even though the CEO is pretty certain, JetGPT will benefit this company. The market is still uncertain about that. And that's why share price is moving sideways and has the potential to move sideways more from here. So what I'm going to do for Appen is just wait for some good, positive financial news from the company. Now on to the American listed company, starting with General Electric. And hopefully, you know the General Electric logo. I would assume that most people have or do recognize the General Electric logo. But again, I'm assuming. And when you do assume, you tend to make an ass of you and me because a lot of times assumptions are completely wrong. So if you have never seen the General Electric logo before, I'd love to hear from you because I could be over-assuming the knowledge of people out there. Now onto the chart for General Electric. Actually, before we look at the chart, General Electric is not the sort of company I will ever invest in simply because they are not growing. In fact, revenue per share for this company is dropping. It's been dropping over the past 10 years. And when you look at the long-term chart and look at the highs, the three most recent long-term highs, you have to go all the way back to 2000. At that point in time, the share price was $360. That was a high right there. Share price right now is 90. So it gives you a sense of where what the share price has done over the last 20 years. So it's gone from 360 to a current share price of 90. The next high was in 2007 at $250. Then the next high in 2016 was $200. And right now we're still at $90. But when you just look at the chart, and this is the daily chart going back to 2020, the share price is at a really interesting level. So the only reason I'm looking at General Electric right now is just because of the chart. If we go back to 2021, the share price for General Electric really struggled to get above $90. So you can see three times it hit $90 and then pulled back. So that means you could say that's like a triple top, but that also means that the market wasn't willing to pay above $90 for this company. So that's a really strong resistance level for General Electric. And then even though the share price fell all the way down to about $48, Back in 2022, share price has been on a nice run since October, increasing from $48 to 90 So not quite doubled, but a nice increase for shareholders during that period. But over the past three or four weeks, the share price has been hovering around $90, hovering around that resistance level because there is a fight between the bulls and the bears. And you could say the bears are those people out there, those investors who know that $90 is a resistance level because of what happened in 2021 and are trying to sell. 
while the bulls say, well, the share price is at a really nice uptrend now. And if the share price can get above $90 on strength, that means the share price will continue to climb from here. So that's why the share price has been going up and down over the past three weeks right on this resistance level, because it's a fight between the bulls and the bears. But the simple fact is this is not the sort of company I would invest for the long term because it is, uh, I won't say it's, it's definitely not growing. I won't say it's dying just yet, but for some reason, the market is, has been interested in this company over the past, say, four or five months. Maybe it's just because of the chart, because the share price has moved into an uptrend, or maybe the management of the company have some exciting ideas for the future, and they would have to have these exciting things because this company has been losing revenue over the past 10 years, and the share price has been falling consistently over the past 20, at least 20 years. I do remember before 2000, the share price was in a beautiful uptrend and the share price reached that high of $360 and it's been falling ever since. So I wouldn't necessarily call this business a dying company, but just be aware, revenue has been dropping and even though the share price does look, well, the chart looks pretty good right now, just be aware, this could be just some short-term hype around the company. Now, the next two companies should be lumped together because I featured these two companies, BuzzFeed and C3AI, in my previous American Focus uh, video. And the main reason was because of this initial hype in AI. And you can see the BuzzFeed share price uh, back in late January rose about 100% one day, 80% the next day. Maybe it was flipped. In fact, the share price rose from about $1 all the way to a high of $4.20. So that's a nice four bagger in two days of trading. But you'll notice the share price has pulled back. And even if you look at the volume, volume has decreased significantly after those two days. So even though there was that initial interest in this company, that interest waned significantly. In fact, the share price has pulled all the way back to below $1. So this is a sort of instance where there was that initial hype and then that initial hype just faded away fairly quickly. Not the sort of company you want to own off the back of that initial hype. Now, this chart is completely different from C3AI. So let's have a look at the C3AI. And when you look at this particular chart, you will notice a completely different look when it comes to volume. So again, volume is very important when it comes to looking at charts. So onto C3AI. And C3AI investors, the market had the same reaction as BuzzFeed, not quite as severe as BuzzFeed. It wasn't like a full bagger over a few days, but Definitely a nice uptrend in share price because of this increased interest in AI. Share price went from just above $10 to about $28 in about one month of trading. But after that initial hype, the share price has gone sideways. A little bit of volatility in there, but have a look at the volume. The volume, even though it's fallen a little bit, has remained really strong. So compare that volume to the volume uh previous to January, there was absolutely very little volume, not, not no volume, but very little volume compared to what we're seeing over the past few months with C3AI. So the market is still interested in this company. The interest hasn't waned, unlike BuzzFeed. And in my opinion, they're completely different companies. I'm not sure why there was that initial interest in BuzzFeed. It's just the CEO or some manager mentioned how JetGPT or AI would benefit BuzzFeed, but this company has AI in the name, C3 AI. Yetiko is AI. And even though I don't know a lot about this company, you can just tell by the market and the way the interest in this company hasn't waned away that what this company is doing, the market likes. And that's why the share price is now in an uptrend and why the volume has remained fairly strong. Now onto another fairly mature company on the New York Stock Exchange, and that is, it's either called Triple M or 3M. Now, this was originally called Minnesota Mining and Manufacturing Company, hence 3M, and the T code is MMM. A fairly mature company, this is a multinational conglomerate. They sell over 60,000 products under several brands, and some of the things they do produce include adhesives, laminates, pacifier protection, paint protection films, electrical and electronic connecting and insulating materials, car care products, electronic circuits, healthcare software, and optical films. Now, when it comes to the business itself, it is slowly growing. So in terms of revenue, 3 to 4% per year over the past 10 years, earning a share between about 4 and 5% per year over the past 10 years. But when you do look at some of the other metrics, return on invested capital, about 10 to 15, which is nice. 
uh, return on equity 30 to 40 over the past 10 years. That's really, really nice. So if you're interested in stability, this could be the company for you. Not only that, but this company has a nice dividend yield, something like 6.5%. And the P ratio of the 3M company is under 10. So possibly attractive, attractively valued right now as well. And not only that, when you look at the chart, you can see why there is possibility this could be good value because the share price reached a high after a nice uptrend period. You can see between 2012 and 2018, this is a weekly chart, share price moved up significantly from $90 to high of $260, which is a nice uh, increase in share price for a company that is not growing that strong. So during that six year period, there was multiple expansion in this company. The market was more and more willing to pay a premium for 3M company. So I'm pretty sure it's 3M, not triple M. Anyway, since that high of $260 back in 2018, share price has struggled. In fact, the share price has pulled back from 260 to a current share price of $101. And the last time share price was this low was way back in 2013. In fact, the share price right now is almost at, if not at, a, a 10 year low. So there are some things going for this company in terms of valuation, in terms of okay growth. When I say okay growth, I'm talking about three to four percent growth. And if you get a nice dividend yield and that dividend yield slowly creeps up, and this is a stable company in terms of their revenue, this could be the company for you. So it's all about your risk. Are you more risk averse? And those more risk averse investors might like this company to have in their long-term portfolio. Now onto Netflix, and I'm not the biggest fan of Netflix as an investment. That's just me and my investing style, simply because I don't like their business model in terms of they, they're all about quantity, not quality. I would prefer these type of streamers to focus on quality, uh, pay back on your quantity of products, of uh, you know inventory, and try to focus on quality. That's just me. And I believe if they did that, Netflix would be the stro stronger company than it is now. And remember back in, was it April last year? Share price fell off a cliff. And the reason share price fell off a cliff was a decrease in subscribers. And then the low was reached just after that. So there probably were quite a few investors out there who saw some value in Netflix when the share price fell to about $170 in May, June of last year. And since then, the share price has been a nice uptrend. They've turned around the loss of subscribers. Now they are gaining subscribers and the share price has been moving up. Not only that, the share price hit the uptrend line about a week ago and it started to rebound off that uptrend line, which means that that support level, which is the uptrend line, the dashed sloping upwards line is a support level. And the market realizes that. And that's why some buying came in on that day when the share price hit, perfectly hit that uptrend line. The next thing we have to see is a new high in the share price. And that means share price has to get above $380. Current share price is $330. So a long way to go before Netflix share price reaches a new high. And when I say new high, meaning a uh, high within this uptrend period. That's all I have for this technical update, 26th of March, 2023 edition, focusing on five ASX companies, including Novonix, Appen, and three others I completely forget right now because my memory is quite bad. I'm getting old. And then five companies listed on either the NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange, including uh, General Electric, uh, 3M Company, Netflix, uh, and then also BuzzFeed and C3AI. And the reason I can remember those five companies is because it is more recent than those five ASX companies. So if you have any thoughts about any companies I've featured in today's video, I'd love to hear from you. So leave it in the comment section of this video. Otherwise, I am not a financial advisor. If you do need financial advice, make sure you seek out someone who is qualified and can speak to your own financial needs. That's it for this video. Have a good day. Bye.